Today, on Energy Contact, Einstein told us that mass is the same as energy, and science took a quantum leap forward. And even though 100 years later, we don't really know what it means, it has changed our lives in so many ways. But there's something still that Einstein left out of the equation, consciousness. And when we understand where that fits, then we'll really understand perfect health. Want to become more aware? Well, focus your consciousness right here, because it's coming up right now on Energy Contact. Hello, and welcome to Energy Contact. My name is Joseph Willenbrink. Thank you for joining me today, and thank you to the production staff here in the studio for helping me get my message out to you. Energy Contact is a series that I'm presenting to you as a public service. It's about attaining perfect health, growth, self-improvement, happiness, and realizing your full potential. It's designed to present you a new way of seeing yourself and a new way of seeing the world around you. We're talking about things that have to do with making an energetic contact an energetic contact with yourself internally and with your environment. There's no difference between the body, the mind, the spirit, the emotion, the intellect, the ego. There's no difference between mass and energy. We love to separate and dissect, to categorize these things out. But in fact, all that health and self-improvement and such that we're talking about, it takes place when we do just the opposite, when we push these things together, when we make an energetic contact between the physical world and the unseen one. We're presenting on this program a brand new paradigm, a brand new paradigm that is thousands of years old. We're presenting extraordinary topics for ordinary people. And let's move right ahead with that. Let's bring up our first slide. Everyone, please know that I am not a doctor. Here's that slide coming up any second. There it is. I might call myself an energy healer or a chakra healer. So might you, so might a lot of people, but state, federal, and local governments absolutely do not. If you're looking for medical advice, you're in the wrong place. This is not a medical advice program. This is not a medical anything program. There's important information on this slide. We're going to leave it up here for a few seconds, and I'll uh, request that you read it with all due awareness. When you've sort of got that material down, if you will, please go locate a pencil and paper. Here's why. At the end of this show, we're going to run some credits, and on those credits, there's going to be contact information for me. I invite and encourage you to contact me. I hope you will. But in order to contact me, you're going to need that information. And in order to get it, you're going to need a pencil and paper. Now, there will be plenty of time to write that stuff down at the end of the show if you have your pencil and paper ready and by your side. So please locate that now. All right, let's come back up here. Today's show is show number 43. And if you're tuning in for the first time today, thank you. Thanks and welcome. I think you'll enjoy the show. These shows are sequential. They build. We're talking about things today that we introduced and explained on previous programs. So there's some ramp-up time, some up-to-speed time, some stuff that you will have missed out on. However, I'm doing my very best to make each show have great value on a standalone basis. So if it is your first time or one of your first times and, and what you see today piques your interest, I will invite you to look around. Uh, there will be earlier programs airing later, either right here on this channel or perhaps in the different cable areas where your friends live. And if you look for them, I'll appreciate it. All right, and now's the time of the show where I introduce my co-host, the brains of this outfit. Let's get Slim on camera. This is my friend Slim, and Slim helps me out to illustrate a couple of important points on energy contact. Since we're investigating what energy contacts in the physical self, we have to understand a few things, don't we? We have to understand energy and this show is certainly about energy. But that energy out there somewhere, out there in some nebulous place, does us no good whatsoever. We have to understand what it is that the energy contacts. Slim is here to help us do that. Remember, a body without energy is just a corpse. An energy without a body, it might be a number of cool things, but none of them are human. All right, 
Let's move forward. Previously on Energy Contact, we have been talking about the body intellect, the body intellect and the anatomy that it builds. We've seen how the same materials in our brains that give us memory, reason, logic, recall, all of those things that we think of as brain functions completely, how they are in fact in every cell of our body. And we've seen how that body intellect builds us, how thought turns into anatomy. More recently on Energy Contact, we've been looking at the history and the philosophy of how we think about ourselves and the ways we care for our health or are not, or fail to care for our health. And we've been comparing and contrasting what we've divided into two main schools of thought. Conventional medicine, otherwise known as Western medicine, allopathic medicine, standard medicine, this is the stuff that you go to the doctor for, the stuff that your health care plan covers. This is based on the science, its roots are in the science of Descartes and Henry Bacon and the scientific method. And on the other hand, there's alternative medicine, holistic medicine, complementary medicine, natural medicine, naturopathic medicine. This is the herbs and the supplements, the things that you find in your natural food store. This is the medicine that your doctor will not endorse and your health care plan will not cover. We've seen over the past couple of shows that what we're calling alternative, it actually encompasses a vast array of different things. It's a little unfair to lump all of those into one category uh, that we're calling alternative. But in the interest of time, that's what we're doing. Because they do all possess one basic philosophical similarity. And that one basic philosophy is sort of at odds with the philosophy of standard medicine, of standard Western medicine. All along while we've been doing this, we've been talking just a little bit, been alluding to this mysterious energy that the old mystics and the old Indian meditators in the woods called kundalini energy. So today, that's where we're going. We're continuing to look at the divergent foundations upon which our health care systems are based. But we're, today we're moving off into some new directions as well. Particularly today, we want to look at some of the things that these two general modes of health care have in common. Most obviously, that both of these systems have plenty of people who are big proponents of them, who are big fans of them, but they're still not getting better. We want to look at that today. There's something missing, something we don't understand, something we haven't figured out yet. Because if we did, we wouldn't be stuck with the cancers and the arthritis and the depressions and the mystery pains that we can't figure out what they are and we don't know how to heal them, be they physical, mental, spiritual, emotional, or otherwise. So knowing that we're searching, we're sort of looking for where to search, how to get from where we are to where we want to be. Now remember, we've been saying that there's values in integrating the East two systems, and I propose that we do. But even so, even integrating them, even putting them all together, there's something that we're still missing. That's what we want to look at today. But before we do, everybody take just a moment, sit back, close your eyes for a second, and take a big deep breath, because now is the part of our show where we get to visualize. We're going to take our virtual journey, our field trip. And today, we are going to talk about somnambulation. What's that? Well, it's sleepwalking. Imagine that you're visiting a friend and he's telling you the sad story of his sleepwalking problem. As he's talking to you, there you are in his front room, and even though you're trying to get him his full attention, you can't help but divert your attention around the room because it is an award showcase. This guy's got awards, plaques, trophies, commendations, all sorts of things around the house and in a number of different fields too. He's got scientific discoveries and artistic accomplishments. There's music, literature, medicine, a peace prize or two. This guy's done awesome things and so you try to console him about his sleepwalking problem and you say, look, it's all right. Your sleepwalking problem hasn't stopped you any. Look around, look at the wonderful things that you've done for humanity. But the guy replies to you, he says, well, you know, he says, that's part of the problem. I don't know anything about any of this stuff. Nothing. I'm a high school dropout. I try to read my own papers, and I don't have any idea what I'm talking about myself. 
and I don't remember what any of these awards are for or when they were given to me. During the time I was making these accomplishments that they tell me I make, and during the times I've been receiving the awards for them, I have been completely asleep. Huh. Hold that thought. We've been looking at models, at scientific models. We've seen that every math and science student learns this following phrase. All models are wrong, but some models are useful. Those models we build to understand our health and our health care systems, they're not supposed to be accurate or precise. Not the standard ones, not the alternative ones. They're every bit as inaccurate, they're every bit as wrong. Some of the greatest scientific discoveries in history have been made using faulty models and premises. Or while people were looking for completely other things. So they've been made while we are in effect sleepwalking, while we're unconscious. Now remember the object for all of us is health, growth, happiness, and self-improvement, realizing our full potential, having this for everyone. So to the extent that we're succeeding at that goal, well, good for us. It doesn't matter if we're asleep or not. It doesn't matter if the models are wrong. We're doing good things, and we're getting closer to some desired something. But here's the catch. We will not be completely there until we wake up. So, we know that our models are wrong. Let's take a look at them anyway. Let's bring up a slide. We don't really have time to review all the stuff on this slide, but this, in a nutshell, is really what we've been looking at over the past few shows, the past few episodes of Energy Contact. While there are a million different forms of what we call alternative health care, they all share sort of in general the, the philosophies that you see on the right-hand side of that column there, the holism and deductive reasoning, monism, that they're lifestyle things, that they're wellness care, an ounce of prevention as opposed to that pound of cure. So if you look back and forth, you see some of the core differences. We're going to continue looking at these today and maybe over the next show or two, but we're going to look at where both systems are taking us. Let's come back here. So we spoke about Einstein at the top of the show, and we've mentioned him in passing over the past few shows. But what does Einstein, he wasn't a doctor, what does he have to do with the way we care for our health? We've spoken, too, about Rene Descartes. We've spoken about him a bunch over the past few shows. We don't have time to review much of that. But we have shown how Descartes set up much of what has become modern science and modern medical science based on that foundation of dualism, that dualism that we just saw in our slide there. According to Descartes, there's that inherent, irreconcilable difference between body and mind, between body, mind, spirit, emotion, intellect, ego, between body and soul, and that you can't cross over that. Well, Einstein was a monist. He said that there was no difference between mass and energy. He said there was no difference between body, mind, spirit, emotion, no difference between body and soul. There's no difference between anything. There's really just one big thing in different forms and different manifestations, like ice and water and steam. Just the same thing in a different state of being. And Einstein, in doing so, he explained us something that we didn't know, something new. And again, even though that was a hundred years ago when he did these things, we're still uncomfortable with the conclusion. We don't like it yet. We don't fit into it because our senses lie to us. Do you know when Einstein received his Nobel Prize for his special theory of relativity? That's this theory about mass and energy and stuff. This is perhaps the most important single piece of science ever done by anyone, anywhere, anytime. And do you know when he got a Nobel Prize for that? Never. He didn't get one. Einstein won a Nobel Prize, but it was for something completely different, something called the photoelectric effect. It was pretty cool, too, but nothing compared to this. The reason he didn't get one is because the scientific community at that time looked so far down their nose at this work. They just thought it was wacky stuff, and they just figured they were going to be smart enough any day now to, to figure out all the holes in his logic, to show it as the nonsense that they thought it was. Yeah, right. Einstein was the patron saint, a catalyst for all of us who were waking up, or even for those of us who just desire to wake up. 
he was truly a prophet, truly a pioneer. But even so, he didn't have it all. He didn't have it all down. There was some stuff he couldn't squeeze into it. But even so, thanks to the foundation that he laid down, we're picking up little pieces of it as we go. We learned a lot more about it in the 70s, and we've talked a lot about these pivotal 70s discoveries. And there was a flurry of them, particularly the discovery of receptors and neuropeptide ligands. Remember when we talked about those? If you'll recall, these are the discoveries that showed the physiological basis, the physical basis of the complete non-difference between the body and spirit and emotion. These are the missing links between the two of them. These discoveries, they are as physical as a molecule and as spiritual as God's love. And they're prime example of what Einstein was talking about, of the oneness of us, the oneness that topples the so-called scientific basis for so-called medical science, for that duality. But there's even more to these discoveries. We saw those neuropeptide ligands that we were talking about. The neurologist was studying them, and he saw them exclusively as neurological system, as nervous system agents. But meanwhile, at the exact same time, unbeknownst to each other, these same things were starting to be studied by endocrinologists who isolated them as glandular chemicals only, exclusively. And at the same time, they were being discovered and studied by immunologists who just knew that these were immune substances, immune system substances, exclusively. And as if that's not enough, they were being studied by gastroenterologists who identified them as strictly, exclusively gastrointestinal chemicals. Wow, that is really amazing if you think about it. Why? Because since the 1600s, since the time of Descartes, we've been dividing and subdividing, categorizing, specializing, separating these things out as much as we possibly can. And we got a lot of good set, successful results out of it. Things that our bodies are, things in our bodies, they're supposed to be so kind, so polite, as to remain in their own little separate discrete boxes. They're not supposed to be crossing over things like this. Up until the time of the 70s, it always sort of seemed that way too. This explains why people who have enigmatic medical problems and they go to their doctor about them, well, they start to get sent to a series of specialists, and those specialists, they go from one to another, and those specialists never talk to each other. Why? Well, they don't think they have to. They think their stuff is happening in a vacuum. It explains why, if you've got a medical condition, you go to be diagnosed, and they use Einstein's physics all over the place. The MRI machines, the CAT scans and stuff, that's all Einstein's physics. But as soon as those machines spit out the little tapes with their results, boom, it's right back to the days of Descartes. Modernness ends right there. So, we're just finally arriving at the point where we're realizing that we can't just parse ourselves out anymore. We can't treat ourselves like a stolen car at a chop shop. It doesn't work anymore. We've come to the place where the model fails. Einstein showed us that, that something in the very core of Descartes' dualism is flawed. These more recent discoveries have amplified that. And yet much of the medical hierarchy is still in denial about it. And that's disturbing. These discoveries we're talking about, these 70s discoveries, the neuropeptides and stuff, what it means is, like Einstein says, like I've been telling you, there's no difference between the nervous system and the immune system and the gastrointestinal system and the endocrine system. There's no difference between them. And you know what that means? That means that there's no difference between the physiological and the spiritual. There's no difference between the emotional and the intellectual. They're all the same thing. And now the science proves it. Old mystics were burned at the stake for saying stuff like this. For centuries they were. And now we're finding that they're right. Sorry for the fire and the brimstone and the suffering, guys. Our bad. We're seeing that we wrote them off because we regarded them as being unscientific. But now we see that what we thought was medical science is at least equally unscientific. Medicine? Unscientific, you're saying? Huh. How can you say that, Joseph? 
Well, it's the truth. We talk a lot about medical science, but medicine really isn't a hard science at all. And in academic circles, they really know that. It's no more of a hard science than metaphysics. You hear the word metaphysics. Meta medicine's no more of a hard science than metaphysics is hard physics. Medical science is a meta-science. On university campuses, the strict science disciplines, they sort of look down their nose a little bit at medical science. Why? Well, there's reasons for it. Medical science is just too loose. It's too unpredictable. It's not quantifiable. After all, we do refer to it as the medical arts, don't we? Well, there's a reason for that. And we think in terms of good doctors and poor ones. If they were scientific, they'd all be the same. Which, by the way, that's what the whole managed healthcare industry is trying to foist upon us. Interchangeable doctors with interchangeable patients, patients all of whom have interchangeable parts. One is the same as the other. They're commodities, an assembly line of mechanized health care. But it doesn't work that way. I'm digressing a little bit. Let's go back and look at Descartes for a second. If you'll check your encyclopedias, Descartes was not a doctor. He was not a medical science any more than Einstein was. And he didn't want to be. He was a great scientist, a great mathematician, not a doctor. But he had a mission. And it wasn't a bad mission. He had a mission to apply the scientific method to everything. He was a champion of it. He wanted to, to apply it to medical research and everything. Let's bring up another slide. And we'll look at something Descartes told us. Descartes said, each problem that I solved became a rule which served afterwards to solve other problems. This is one of Descartes' most famous, most quoted, and most followed sayings. And many people just accept this as, as fact, including a lot of scientists, probably because Descartes said it and they have some esteem for him. But the logic is flawed. In a sterile hard scientist's laboratory, it might be, I really don't even think so then, it might be, this might be the case that you can make rules out of old, previous problems solved. But when you transfer it from science to meta-science, error is introduced. Let's come back here. So, so there's error in it. Science is built upon reproducibility, upon uniformity. In the hard sciences, if you do an identical thing to a million identical objects, you get a million identical results. That's what scientific method is. That's what makes it science. If it's not infinitely reproducible, it's not science. Well, you can't do that with people, can you? And the mistake Descartes made with his each problem I solved business is that he was transferring something between a hard reproducible science and stuff that isn't reproducible. Remember from long ago, we saw how atoms are identical? Well, you and I are made of atoms. Atoms are pretty scientific. Everything's made of atoms. Uh, pencils, frogs, trees, living and non-living things, everything. Everything physical is made of atoms. You have seven billion, billion, billion of them in you. That's seven times 10 to the 27th for my fellow geeks. I have another seven billion, billion, billion in me, and so does everybody else. Most of them, in fact, are carbon. Again, scientifically, a carbon atom in you is the same as a carbon atom in me, is the same as one in a lump of coal, a diamond, a pencil, the gasoline in your gas tank. Well, let's look at that gasoline in your gas tank. A gallon of gasoline made today in Los Angeles is, oh, for intents and purposes, identical to a gallon of gasoline made, say, oh, in 1955 or so in Paris. That's not exactly true, but roll with me on this. Relative to us, it's very true. So why aren't we the same? We've got the same, not only do we have the same atomic makeup as each other, we have the same roughly atomic makeup as that puddle of gasoline. Well, why is that? We're not scientific, are we? Medicine isn't science because what it studies is not scientific. What does it study? It studies us. If we were just physical, if we were just like those gallons of gasoline, we would be scientific. But we'd all be exactly the same. We'd look the same. We'd act the same. There'd be no difference. And remember, that's the box into which so-called managed health care is trying to stuff you. Have you ever seen those prescri prescription drug ads on TV? Of course you have. They're all over the place. There's a little disclaimer at the end. 
and it says, most people do very well with this drug, but 2% of them get headaches, and 5% of them get diarrhea, and 1% get nausea. And stuff. Well, why should that be? That's not scientific. If it was science, different people wouldn't get different results. Okay, I guess I've killed that point. What science can't explain is often labeled mysticism. But mysticism gets a bad rap, and that's not fair. Does the fact that you are mystical scare you? Well, if you aren't scientific, you must be mystical, and it shouldn't scare you. Ancient health practices, going back to them for a second, they developed over centuries of empirical observation. They discovered things 5,000 years ago that science is still verifying today, that science is quote-unquote just discovering today, and some stuff that science hasn't figured out yet, but I can promise you it will. Well, how did they do that back then? Well, they did it because they had some consciousness, but there was a problem. They didn't have any science. They didn't have any technology. They lived in a natural world, but that natural world was much more unsanitary. It was a dirtier world, too. Well, yesterday's mysticism is today's hard science, and I can pretty much promise you that today's mysticism will be tomorrow's dry scientific fact. So, if we aren't scientific, what is it that makes us not so? Relative to hard science, quantum physics, and, and all that sort of stuff. Well, it is that. It's precisely that consciousness. Even though we're still sleepwalking to a large degree, we at least have the capacity to wake up. And that's enough. That'll do it. Descartes looked at consciousness. He realized there was something up, but the only thing he could figure out it was, it was something, it was one of God's divine mysteries, and God wasn't telling. Something that had to be left to God. Well, I believe that it is divine, but I think that God didn't really have a problem with us figuring it out any more than he has a problem with us figuring out a cure for smallpox or a, or a polio vaccination. So, what does this have to do with comparing our health care system? Well, it has to do with where all health care systems need to go. We need to develop that consciousness. Remember now we have that us or them situation. The medical doctor sees us as physical only, void of spirit and energy. The energy healer sees us as spirit and energy, but they forget that we're bones and body. They forget that we're flesh and blood. Well, we've seen on energy contact that a body without energy is just a corpse. So the doctor's missing something. An energy without a body, whatever it is, it's not human. So the energy healer is missing something, too. We have to find that way to where it is. It's not the body that's important. It's not the energy. What's important? It's the interface. It's the place where we make energy contact. I wish you peace and positive energy and a healthy life in energy.